what's up everybody welcome back to the channel once again heading home to tackle another project I'm super excited about this one been wanting to get to this one for a while if you've been following the videos you've seen we recently did the unboxing video of the air dog 2 4g lift pump so we're gonna go home and get cracking on that uh, my goal is to try and be as detailed as possible and hopefully encourage you guys to tackle the project yourself if you're a little on the fence about it it's really not as complicated as it looks I know when you first open the box you see all the pieces and components it can be a little overwhelming but uh, it's really not so bad uh, just out of curiosity I call a local performance diesel shop here in my area just to see what they would charge for a lift pump uh, their standard hourly rates 100 bucks an hour uh, you estimate the job at four hours so they're charging four hundred dollars for a lift pump install so at the price of what you know the fast or your dog lift pumps are going for plus an install price you could be well into it a grand or more uh, so if you can do it yourself you're keeping it just to the price of the pump itself uh, literally saving myself four hundred dollars by spending a half a day maybe three quarters of a day if it's your first time ever installing one taking the time to do it right but well, it's really not that overwhelming of a project i highly encourage you guys to think about doing it yourself and not to be afraid of it um, if you're curious exactly what the lift pump does it's highly beneficial for the diesel motor especially for the duramax i encourage you guys to do a little research check it out uh, Air Dog actually has a fantastic YouTube video uh, showing the aerated fuel that goes into your system uh, pre-lift pump and shows the difference once the lift pump is fired on. Uh, it's really a cool video, not very long. I encourage you guys to go ahead and check that out. See exactly why we're installing lift pumps on these diesel motors and how beneficial they are. So we're just about home. We'll get cracking at this. Like I said, I've already done the unboxing video. Not going to go through all the, the details of what's in the kit. If you're curious what all comes with, go ahead and check out the unboxing video of it. And uh, thanks again for watching, you guys. Hopefully this is beneficial to you guys. All right, guys. Once again, this is the AirDog 2 4G. We're going to be installing it on an 09 LMM Duramax. Uh, if you haven't seen it yet, go ahead and check out the unboxing video. Then you can see exactly what comes with the kit. Uh, for now, we're just going to work at the pieces at hand. I'm going to do the best that I can to make this video as detailed as possible. Some of it's going to be easier to film than others. <clears throat> so for now, we're going to go ahead and start with assembling the bracket to install the 4G. So you can see, I would recommend holding this up underneath your truck. Find a mounting location you want to install it. They actually recommend putting it on the inside of the frame. However, you can adapt it and install it on the outside of the frame rail as well. Personally, I'm still unsure exactly where I want to mount it at this point. But you're going to want to find the location that works best for you is height. They say you want to mount it up as high as you possibly can to keep things from hanging down low. Like I said, I figured out a good height for mine, so we're going to go ahead and install. you got a plastic spacer. This is your back bracket. As you can see, it's countersunk for the hardware. So everything mounts flush. We'll just kind of go right through the plastic spacer <clears throat> and you have your actual bracket that the air dog mounts to get everything loosely into place bolt it right up this part you're just going to need a, a half inch wrench and you're going to need a hex bit what size is a 3 16 hex bit for those bolts. So we'll go ahead and get this all tightened down and then we can get the lift pump attached to it. And then we can get it mounted to the frame rail itself. So you got the backing plate, all your hardware, everything comes in the kit. Pretty much once you get it up there you're going to sandwich this, the frame rail between it. And that's what holds it up in place. Okay, and there you are, have your lift pump attached to the bracket, ready to mount up in the truck. Just so I don't bang these around in the meantime, I'll loosely 
put them back in place. And that will be your finished product right there. Alright, so here's our next task. We are going to insert this T into the filler neck tube, just like the instructions here are showing. This is going to be for your return. So here is the filler neck. Pay attention, please note there are arrows on here. It is directional. And let's see if you can see this because there is a little baffle in there. It's going to angle the fuel as it flows back in here, back into your tank. So what you're going to have to do is cut your filler neck. Just like they show here, you have to insert this. You're going to make sure you've got your hose clamps obviously on each side and put it in there. Unfortunately, this my situation is going to be a tad bit unique compared to those of you who don't have anything going on and you need to cut and insert this. The previous owner here has done something a little bit goofy. I don't know if they had a fuel tank in this truck or something before, so they got this goofy T already mounted. So mine has been cut. I need to loosen these clamps, remove this one that's in here, and then reinsert the one that came with the kit. So the tube has already been cut, a little bit of excess material has already been taken out. Looks to be, from what I can tell, about the same size as the one I'm going to be installing. So I just need to get this one out of there and replace it with the one that came with the kit. Alright, so as you guys can see, I got that junk yarded out of the way. Not completely sure exactly what was going on here. A little valve on there. And T, when I bought the truck, there was also, you can kind of see here, about a two inch hole. I had to make a patch and plug and weld up into the bed, I, coming right down over here. So I've only got to assume there must have been a fuel tank or something mounted up in the bed of the truck by the previous owner at one time. So, like I said, I've already got that all plugged up as soon as I bought the truck. So now that we got that out of the way of our filler neck, we'll go ahead and insert that T that comes with the kit, clamp it down, and we'll be back in business. Okay, so we'll go ahead and get the clamps inserted in place. Open this one up a little bit more. And like I said, we're gonna pay attention to the arrows on there. Go ahead and get this wrestled into place. As you guys can tell, it's a good stuck fit. Probably would have been hooving me to maybe lubricate the ends of that up a little bit with something. Help it slide on in there. So there you have it, once it's all installed, you can see I got a, I had a little rubber cap that I had that I put on here just to keep debris from getting in there until I get this thing all hooked up. But that's the finished product you're going for. Alright, next up we're going to go ahead and tackle the wiring harness. This is the complete harness that comes with the kit. I'm not going to go through every detail of me actually running the wires, it's fairly self-explanatory. Uh, there's a wiring harness 
in the truck running along the frame. We'll just tuck this up with that nice and neat and as clean as possible. We'll zip tie it all to there just to make it look nice and clean. So basically you have a relay with the kit. You're gonna to wanna to attach this to the firewall as well as a fuse. Find somewhere where there's firewall, whatever, just so this is attached, it's not bouncing all around. Keep it upright. Okay, so you've got your wire, plenty of wire here. It's really not that complicated. I'll go over it when we actually do the connections to this. You can either hook these directly to the battery, your alternator, a good power supply, a ground, and in this one we're going to get into the fuse box with the out of fuse and we're going to find an ignition power. And the two pin Deutsch connector is what plugs exactly right into the air dog. This is for a pressure sensor as well as there's a couple leads here for lights. This is a, a low pressure light kit that they sell separately. I did not buy it. We're not going to use it. So we're just going to secure these so that there is no accidental contact. We use some shrink tubing over them or something like that and then we will zip tie them up with the harness and secure them so that those these two connections will not be used in my application so that is pretty much in a nutshell the wiring harness so let's go ahead and get it run up in there so here you guys can see I've sort of simplified things I've wound up everything that's going to go under the hood the relay the fuse all our power ground connections Pretty much rolled these up out of the way. We'll tuck them up clean somewhere once we get it installed. Like I said, see you get a little shrink wrap on them, keep them protected, just in case we ever decide we want to use them in the future. And this will be the end, the tail that's run up under the truck and to the air dog. I've also zip tied this back out of the way, got a little shrink wrap and electrical tape around it, again, to protect that plug in case we ever decide we want to use it in the future. So we will go ahead and get this run along the frame and we'll get the connections hooked up under the hood and we'll go from there. So here's where we're at with the wiring harness right now. I've got it zip tied up here in the general location. I plan to actually mount the lift pump. You can see I get the wires nice and cleanly run. Zip tied up along this harness all along the frame. Then we head up into the engine compartment. <coughs> And here's what we got going here. There were a couple relays already mounted to the firewall, so I just mounted this one right up next to it. Kind of sort of looks like it belongs there. Wires all tucked in there as neat as possible. Now the only issue I have with the kit here, and I guess it's not really an issue, it's great that they gave you a bunch of wire, but I've probably got in excess of four or five feet of wire to my battery connections so I guess in theory you could just coil all this up somewhere in there but in an effort to make it cleaner I'm gonna go ahead and just cut all this wire off and recrimp some connectors onto this and I will reconnect and shrink wrap the fuse tap because I do not need all this excess wire like I said, it'll drive me nuts. I like to have things nice and clean so we're just gonna clean this all up a little bit it's better to have too much than too little but uh you know, had they just included all the connectors and stuff in the kit, then you could just do that. Instead, I had to use a few of my own. I'll have to cut all these off. So, I mean, it's cool that they tried to save a little work for you, but I don't really need several feet of wire all coiled up in here. So we'll get those shortened up. We'll get those connected. I'm just going to connect the ground to the negative on the battery. Got a hot post up here we'll use for power. And you need to find an ignition power up in here. You want something that's only hot when the ignition is powered. Uh, use your uh, you use your test light. Find it. You know, or a power probe like I've used. So <clears throat> find one that's only hot when the ignition's on. In my case, with this particular truck, it is number forty that we're going to use. Pick up on that, which happens to be miscellaneous ignition so we'll just tap right into that so we'll go ahead and get things shortened up like I said and then we'll go ahead and plug everything in
So now that we've got those wires all shortened up, we're just going to go ahead and make all our connections. We'll insert the fuse that we removed out into the fuse tap with the little fuse that already comes in it. Just insert that right in place. We've got our ground. We're going to connect to the negative side of the battery here, as well as make our positive connection. And guys, there's no reason you can't just connect all these right to the battery as well. I'm just trying to keep a minimal amount of stuff running directly to the batteries just to help keep it looking clean as uh, most of this will be hidden by the cover once we put it on the box here it's just that much less junk running around in the engine bay here to have to look at so we get those tightened down get the cover back on and it really is that simple the wiring harness for the air dog is complete So as you guys can see, I've decided to mount the lift pump on the outside of the frame rail. Like I said, the instructions that come with the air dog actually recommend mounting it on the inside of the frame rail. And I'm sure it would stay cleaner, a little more protected up in there. Uh, I was a little bit on the fence about which way I wanted to go, but I actually like the look of being able to see the filters. And as far as access for just being able to kneel down, drain the water separator without having to actually crawl up underneath the truck so this is just my personal preference uh, air dog has an install video on an 06 Silverado that they've actually done the same thing for the customer mounting it on the outside you'll just need to be aware that on the outside you'll have to adjust accordingly for your connections according to the instructions because it's now facing the opposite direction on the outside of the frame here and if for some reason it becomes a problem it won't be that big of a deal to just disconnect the lines swap it around to the inside and then reconnect everything and it won't be that big of a deal so I'm gonna go ahead and get it bolted on up here the rest of the way and we'll start getting the lines made up measured and get it all hooked up See, we got the back plate, like I said, basically just sandwiches the pump between the frame. Just getting the last bolt tightened up here. And now we got our pump all mounted up into place. And we can go ahead and get the lines run. With the pump mounted in place, we're going to start making up our lines. I'm going to start with the return line. This kit's made for 01 through 2010 pickups. I don't know exactly what kind of fuel line connections each individual one has. I know some of the older models, you're probably going to need to get a fuel disconnect tool. Like, these are super cheap. Hey, you pick this one up for like 12 bucks on eBay. You can get them for generic ones for under $10. I'll show you guys why I don't need them particular for the style that this truck has on it. I'll show you that when we get to it. Uh, these are what comes with the kit. We got these plastic ones. You got a little little squeeze so you can actually squeeze them. I don't know if you guys can see that, it actually will open it up and allow it to pop off without the use of any tools once you get these up in the truck. So if you need to pull them off and on, that's really all there is to it on this style that comes with the air dog kit. I know the fast kit is different. They actually use a metal one and you probably will need to use these with the fast kit. And some of your factory lines are going to need this as well on some of the older model trucks. Mine has a little bit different style. Like I said, I'll show you that one when we get to it. So AirDog recommends that you lubricate these up with some oil. There are no hose clamps or anything needed with this style, with this particular kit. And you're just going to want to push them in there all the way on. And you'll just have to kind of work them. It's going to take a little force to get them in there. just like that so we'll go ahead and we'll get this one connected we'll hold the line up there under the truck we'll kind of have to figure out how I want to run this get a measurement we'll cut it and then we'll get the other end uh, something you're going to want to do anytime you're messing with the fuel lines and fuel systems you want to keep this as clean as possible 
especially depending on what you use to cut this line. I highly recommend using some compressed air and blowing out the inside. You want to make sure there's no rubber or any sort of debris in the lines that could get sucked into the pump or into your system. You definitely want to keep that as sterile and as clean as possible. Now that I've got this piece of hose all measured, we've got it cut to length. We'll go ahead and get the other end on installed. Like I said, there's no need for hose clamps or anything with these. They're all barbed fittings. Alright, so we'll go get our return line installed. So these are super easy fittings to install. Like I said, guys, and remove. Literally, you just square it up, push it on there. You will hear it click once it's in place. Just like so. And like I said, if you want to take them off, they're just as easy. Just squeeze those clips, and she pops right on off. So these lines are literally that quick. So we got it hooked up to the air dog. On this end, I'll get it run around the way I want it, and then we'll get it hooked to the return line over here. Just like that, our return line's in place. And we'll work on to the supply line next. All right, bear with me, guys. This is gonna be difficult, if not impossible, to film. So this up in the front side of the fuel tank, this is the fuel line we're going to disconnect right here. That red clip literally slides out and then it allows you to pull that apart there. And this is a factory flex line. You can kind of see it runs up the side of the fuel tank. We're going to remove this. We're going to connect one side of the pump to this. This is line, this hard line here is what goes to the engine. The other side of the pump is going to go up on the top side of the tank where this factory line connects. And that will be our suction. had to pull the tank shield out of the way here to even get up here and access this. Here's the other one here and this one is going to be a bear to access. Definitely don't think I'm going to be able to film that one but I'll try and show you how this other one comes apart. And once we wrestle this out of here we can make up our lines, get them into place. There you can see my sure my arm was in the way a couple little tabs on the back just kind of put some pressure on grab a little pick and this just pulled and slid right out and that will be able to pull it apart just like so like I said I'm not gonna be able to film it because I just don't have a third arm and it's difficult to access but I'll go ahead and get the other side pulled off and we'll get this line pulled out of here Finally got that factory flex line out of here. Now that I got it out, you can see in a little bit better detail than up there under the truck exactly what I'm dealing with and what I'm talking about. These are those plastic clips. Like I said, you, you push it back in once you got it on there and it locks it right on the line. You got these couple little tabs that were up on the back side you couldn't see. You kind of got to collapse those, pull on it, and then it pops that right back out and releases that. Now like I said, up there above the top of the tank, I'm not going to lie to you, it was an absolute bear because there just is no room to get your hands up in there and work. And as you can kind of see, it was full of mud, rust, and debris and crap up there. So I had an extremely difficult time not only getting my fingers back there, but getting these little tabs to release. You can see they just flex a tad bit. I actually ended up having to break that one off in order to work it loose. So. Yeah, that was an unpleasant task. But now that that's out of there, we'll go ahead and make up our air dog lines, get this thing all routed, and hopefully get her fired up soon. So just like the previous line, we go ahead and make them all up just the exact same. Like I said, they all are the exact same barb fittings. Oil them up. You're going to insert them into the hose. Measure your length. Cut the ends. Insert the other end, and then you want to route the hoses as best as you can. You're going to want to try and keep them free of kinks and bends, uh, keep them from rubbing on other, other components underneath there. 
Uh, like I said, this is pretty straightforward. You guys have seen the process, so I'll spare you the time. I'm going to go ahead and measure and make up the other two hoses real quick, and then I'll show you exactly where we're going to connect them, and we'll go from there. I need to do a little bit cleaning up of the hoses, keep them from rubbing on things, get them routed exactly the way I want with some zip ties, but you can see we've got all the connections made. This one runs down around the fuel tank here. Cut over here real quick. Goes to the supply side of the pump. We've got the other side mounted up. We've got a return line. And then this one goes around and mounts up there right to the hard line that supplies the engine. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, like I said, you can see I've got the filter off. We're gonna go ahead and get this thing primed and see if we can get the truck running. But just like a oil filter, you guys, AirDog recommends either using some diesel or a little bit of oil to coat on that gasket on the top there just to ensure a positive seal. Get these snugged up in there. And for priming purposes, they actually recommend as per the instructions to fill the water separator with diesel before we try and prime the pump. So I'll go ahead and pull that off next and we'll get it filled up. Get these back in place and we'll see if we can get that pump primed. Okay guys, all electrical connections and hoses. Everything is securely connected. Uh, we're going to go ahead and fire this thing up, ignition power it, and see if we can prime the pump. Uh, one thing AirDog says to do is to actually loosen the fitting up here to prime it until you air out of the system. You start getting fuel out and then tighten it back up. I really don't want to mess with those fittings. So what I've done is I've left the filter a little bit loose. And we'll go ahead and let it run until we hear the sound of the pump change and we start getting some fuel out of here and then we'll tighten it up real quick. And as you can see, that was pretty much instantaneous. A little bit messy as you can see, but I really didn't want to mess with those fittings in there. Okay, one last thing I did real quick, you might want to consider once you've got the system all primed and pressurized. Take a look under there, double check all your connections, your hoses, make sure you don't have any leaks or anything going on in the system. You definitely want to make sure if you do, that you catch them before you head out on the open road. So anyway, now that we've got that thing all primed, let's go ahead and see if we can get her to fire off for the first time. She is running for the first time with the AirDog 2 lift pump. One thing I can say for sure right off the bat, you guys, is she started with extreme ease. So I'm going to go ahead and secure the rest of my wiring at this point, and we'll take it for a test drive. Let's take it for a spin. Just been out here for a few minutes test driving the D-Max. Uh, running super great. Couldn't be happier. Uh, fires up real quick now on initial startup. There's just a noticeable difference. I really don't know how to describe it. Uh, so far, the biggest difference that I can say immediately is throttle response. It's crisp, it's precise, it's immediate, it's very responsive. It's definitely a considerably noticeable difference uh, from the way it ran before. Uh, the pump has been super quiet unless you're outside the cab. Even then, you have to, to try and listen to hear it running. Uh, time will tell whether there's any sort of uh, MPG increases or anything like that with running the pump. We'll have to drive it a little more. Like I said, I've only been out here a couple minutes. But uh, yeah, so far really pleased, you guys.
keep you guys posted. Let's get this thing back home. Make sure we still don't have any leaks. Just a couple of pointers as I finish up, you guys. Just in case you were curious, I should have measured it before I started. Not exactly sure how much I started with, but I did not use the hose sparingly. And you can see I've got several feet left over. So don't feel like you're gonna run short. Another tip and trick, you guys. It's gonna be extremely difficult to keep the hose from rubbing absolutely anything. I've taken my time. I highly suggest you guys take your time to route those hoses as cleanly as smoothly as you can utilize zip ties whatever you need to do if you don't it could definitely come back to haunt you at a later time you do not want these things rubbing and chafing through like i said it's near impossible to keep them from touching any other components but you can take some of this leftover hose cut off whatever length that you need cut a slit in it lengthwise like you can see there and you can utilize the hose as a protector itself open it up wrestle it over the hose wherever it's touching or rubbing another component use a few zip ties to hold that on there and that will work as an inexpensive protector since you've already got a bunch left over to try and save that hose from chafing through at some point and could create epic disaster depending on exactly where you're at and what you're doing out there a couple other things I want to point out to you guys real quick. The service recommendations on these filters from AirDog are 15 to 20,000 miles depending on fuel quality and that is a quote directly from AirDog. If you've seen my oil change video you already know my habits from all my years of service work I highly recommend it. Something you guys think about doing. Grab a paint marker or a sharpie. I always throw the date and the miles on my filters. It helps you remember in the future you don't have to try and remember oh when did I change those last what condition were they in if somebody else ends up with the vehicle or another tech's working on the vehicle you can always come back for a quick easy reference right there something else really simple to point out most people never pay attention to it your filters actually have instructions and directions on them these do not need to be much more than hand tight or what they show on the filters there's absolutely no need or reason to throw a wrench on these and reef them down they do not need to be that tight you can over tighten them and cause damage to the filter itself or your pump or housing same goes for your oil filters on your truck you guys again that will come back to haunt you when you go to try and remove these things like I said there's there's no need to be that tight as long as they're on there follow the directions they're not leaking you're good to go Hopefully this video is helpful to you guys, something I've been looking forward to trying to do for a long time, trying to come up with the time and the finances to do it. Finally got it done. I know it's going to be a little bit longer video because there's several steps in here. If this is something you guys are considering doing for the first time, I know it can be intimidating when you open the box and see all the components and the directions. It's very straightforward. It's super simple. And after contacting one of my local performance diesel shops, they charge $400 for a lift pump install that's a standard hundred dollar an hour shop rate four hours is what they're billing the job out at so for half a day's work out here in my garage in the driveway i've saved myself another four hundred dollars this turned what could have been an eleven plus hundred dollar job into just the price of the pump for me about seven hundred dollars with shipping and tax so i highly recommend you consider it there's a few other videos out there on YouTube. AirDog has some good videos out there. Suggest watching those. And you guys will be successful in your install, I'm sure. Thanks again for watching, you guys. I appreciate the likes and the subscriptions. We'll see you next time.